The ever-polarizing Patty Pimblet split the fan base in half from the very first Octagon appearance. Mike, he's a fighter. Oh! Look at that. Some predict the Brit will soon rise to the top of the lightweight division. Others call him a UFC hype job, criticize his antics and dietary habits. 10 out of 10. It's time to take a close look at Patty Pimblet's career, full of flying submissions. The full extension to drive and then to the angle, he's got the And ruthless finishes. Patrick, or Patty for short, was born in January 1995 in the suburb of Liverpool whose residents are called Scousers. The name comes from Lobscouse, a local sailor's dish, which explains the fighter's culinary preferences. You look like fat bastard, bro. Uh, I know. The city is also famous for its noisy football fans, who instilled their rough street code into young Pimblet. But it wasn't until he saw the brutal war of attrition between Diego Sanchez and Clay Guida in 2009 that the 14-year-old found his calling. <laughs> After first stepping into the cage at the age of 15, Pimblet had a dozen amateur performances in just 15 months. The pay-free run through local promotions did not last long. Nonetheless, Patty managed to earn the nickname The Batty and established himself as an aggressive wrestler with decent ground and pound. Dropping some heavy, heavy shots in. However, it was in grappling exchanges where the future BJJ black belt shined brightest, drowning the rivals in submission-infused deep waters. Right there now. He's panicking. And he's tapped out. Yeah. A regular guest in the cage with a record of 7-2 by the end of 2012, the still buzz-cut Patty was primed for a switch to professional MMA. Make me fight me, you funny. The skinny Liverpool kid started out as a 135-pounder. The 17-year-old Pimblet's debut opponent couldn't last even two minutes. The very first exchange ended in a clinch with a following takedown. Patty then scored a quick technical knockout. In 2013, Pimblet signed with the leading British promotion, Cage Warriors, where he would spend the next eight years. The initial test was Florian Kalin with a 2-0 resume. The baddie immediately took the center of the cage and began to fire away on the feet. Those accidental low blows, very crisp punches from Pimblet though, a lot of rotation. Grueling clinches also played into the Scouser's favor. Unlike previous bouts, this one went the distance. Patty, the Patty. To kick off the next clash, Patty landed a couple of accurate left hands. But due to an ill-advised flying triangle attempt, conceded a position and got his neck trapped in an anaconda choke. The anaconda off the sprawl. That is a fake. Looking pretty tight at the moment. Well, I think he stopped. And he's out. That is it. He actually said that is it. By March 2014, Pimblet had a new hairstyle, which may have caused him to miss weight for the first time. Following two rounds, the baddie was on his way to a hard-earned victory, mixing takedowns with ground and pound. Uh, is the pass into Mount Pimblet pushes up. So your opponent is in Even a fall in the third did not break the Scouser's will. He found the strength within to make a comeback and win another decision. Martin, the silence of Sheridan trying to defend this takedown. And let's see how much the Betty Pimblet! It seemed like the up and comer's hype train was beginning to derail. Yet, the next fight with Conrad Hayes changed everything. Having failed on the scales once again, Patty connected with a high kick in the prologue. The grappling virtuoso soared into the air with a triangle. Hayes tried to resist, but in his native element, Pimblet was one step ahead. With a precise kick and a flashy triangle armbar finish, Patty topped the British sports headlines. The momentum continued in 2014 with a move up to 145 pounds. An attempt to trade with BJJ black belt Stephen Martin pushed Pimblet to the brink of defeat. 
Patty managed to get up. Martin, in turn, unleashed reverse elbows by the cage. After a pause, the referee separated the athletes and they re-engaged. Finally, Pimblet switched to wrestling. In the dying seconds of the round, he noticed an opening and took full advantage of it. Pimblet looking for an aggressive finish, a big left hand and a knee, an elbow from Pimblet. Oh, a huge Stop. elbow! An elbow on the exit from the clinch caused a gaping gash, and the contest was called off by the doctor. The Scouser celebrated this win with his now patented dance. Next in line was the unbeaten French finisher, Kevin Petschy, a well-rounded athlete with no obvious weaknesses. In Pimblet's first main event, the FCC promotion belt was at stake. So far. Oh, oh a huge left hook! At the sixth minute mark, Petschy rocked the Scouser with a TNT right hand. Oh, big right hand from Kevin. But, refusing to go out, Petty rose back and secured a takedown. Patty just keeps working. Unsurprisingly, the Frenchman capitulated in a minute. This could be a dangerous position, but does have the front. It's to the under the chin. chin. It's over. It's the big squeeze. And that's Patty. What Patty does so, so well. And there's the submission. Three months after capturing the title, Pimblet had his first and only defense against Miguel Haro. The Spaniard tried to land heavy in the beginning. Championship and Harrow with a big right hand. The baddie responded with numerous kicks from the distance. Looking content to keep things standing here. Haro didn't like it and punched his way into the clinch. We've seen it. He can really get those. Then he executed a successful throw and recklessly tried to take Patty's back. He's playing chess. Oh, and he's crazy. Once on top, Pimblet softened the prey with a series of right hands forced the mount, and brought the scrap to its logical conclusion with a choke. Pimblet with a body triangle here, Josh. Yeah, Pimblet was so quick through that transition, the body triangle is forced to submission. And there's the submission! Paddy Pimblet with the big squeeze! I stand corrected. Josh Pump. Following a 10-month long hiatus, he returned to Cage Warriors in April of 2016. With a record of 9-1, Pimblet took on a veteran with 30 fights, Ashley Grimshaw. The opponent got off to a good start, throwing a couple of haymakers and slamming the scouser into the canvas. But Patty seized the initiative. He was a constant threat on the ground. His kicks were sharp. The hands did not lag behind. And every mistake made by the counterpart resulted in a more dominant position. Pimblet's actually done a better job with that body lock. Pimblet spent the last minutes in a fierce attack before climbing the fence in celebration. Victory number 10 further confirmed his status as the biggest UK prospect. Penny, the better. Three months later, the Scouser displayed his typical battle pattern once again. In order to wake up, Patty took the full force of a thunderous blow to the head. Technical base, big combination from Teddy Viola. Then transferred the action to the mat, took the back, and got to work. Oh, trouble in, in the opening minute, minute and a half. And he comes back now, like you said, looking for the submission. And the triangle's in! The adversary made it to the end of the first round, although in the second, failed to defend the rear naked choke. The subsequent self-promotion masterclass proved that the only path for Pimblet was one to the top. No one's knocking me out. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm a scouser. You don't get knocked out. The showdown for the vacant Cage Warriors belt versus Johnny Frachet came to fruition in September 2016. The Frenchman won 10 of his last 12, but against Pimblet in Liverpool, he stood absolutely no chance. A flying knee and a couple of follow-up shots at the two-minute mark launched Patty into stardom. With his people in his city. Featherweight gold was a nice bonus to a significant victory. 
The Scouser delivered on the mic as well. What happened? What happened? This left hook? That's what happened! The title defense two months later was Pimblet's first major test. Former UFC fighter Julian Arosa was 17-3, with a 90% finish rate. More importantly, the American was no stranger to ground entanglements. Entering the cage in Kazushi Sakuraba's shorts, Pimblet was yet unaware he would need to summon the samurai spirit. Expecting a quick and decisive win, Paddy immediately jumped into a two-way shootout. Then the scouser floored the opponent in his usual style. Backpacked him and spent the rest of the round searching for a submission. But hopes to build on previous success in the second frame were crushed by the American's cross. Having recovered on the canvas, Paddy managed to reverse the position and stage a late offensive. The next five minute stretch was mostly contested on the ground. Beautiful And a single mistake almost cost Paddy the title. Miraculously avoiding a knockout, Pimblet made it to the championship rounds, and the belt eventually went back to Liverpool. The win was the ninth in a row for Paddy, and the last in his initial five-year-long run as a pro. The UFC expressed interest in the rising scouser. Reluctant to vacate the belt, he postponed the overseas debut and agreed to defend the featherweight crown. Nevertheless, the brutal weight cut for the event in April of 2017 disrupted the plans. Pimblet's compatriot, Nad Narimani, challenged him in all areas. He dominated on the feet. Oh, he gets a touchdown test, but... Landed takedowns. Narimani shooting in here. Did well on top. And more big punches from that. And threatened a submission. Almost got struck off though. Resulting a straining five-round performance. Paddy lost both the title and illusions about making 145 pounds again. Pimblet took a break for 10 months and got back to business against Alexis Savidis. Despite coming up to lightweight, Paddy retained his trademark pressure and flung the Greek down like it was nothing. Dead set on forcing a tap, he allowed the adversary to survive to the horn. Savidis returned the favor in the second round with a couple of right hands, but a careless takedown attempt led the scouser to snatch one of the best submissions of 2018. Didn't quite have the full extension to drive it, and there's the flying triangle! He's got the angle, he's got the extension! And there's the submission! Paddy the Paddy! Pimblet leapt into the atmosphere with a triangle, failed to get a proper squeeze, and switched to an armbar. The astounding joint lock marked Paddy on the UFC radar with a bright flash. Paddy! However, his lightweight title bout in September went badly. The Scouser was forced to pull the lucky pants out of the wardrobe. Rocking orange, he effortlessly beat Decky Dalton in a technical knockout. Big punches here. Dalton turns to his back. He's almost hyperextended backwards. And there we go. The referee has seen enough. Paddy the Paddy is back. The farewell opponent in Cage Warriors was David Martinez, victorious in his last six. Uncharacteristically, Pimblet made the counterpart swing at the air. Having found the groove, Paddy began destroying Martinez. Oh, nice shots there from Pimblet. Chasing Martinez round the flying knee from Pimblet. We've seen him use that before. Big that from the Paddy. An easy back take and an inevitable strangle put an end to the confrontation. That rear naked choke throughout the this whole round. He's oh, saucy. Big squeeze and it's over! Beautiful Paddy, the Paddy is back! In the aftermath, Pimblet urged Dana White to give him a call, which he did. Really very impressive. The 26-year-old prospect got signed in 2021 with a 16-3 record. A willing scrapper named Luigi Vendramini was the first challenge. The plus 130 dot. Pimblet rushed forward from the word go. Oh! And a jumping switch kick. But soon a Brazilian dynamite explosion echoed through the arena. The Vendramini corner. Oh! For almost a round, Paddy was heroically accepting punishment. 
while Vendramini was dishing it out. By the last minute, the Scouser finally came alive and delivered a series of crushing blows. All offense in mind, Pimblet entered an exchange and landed with a long right hook. The Brazilian started to feel seasick, and with 35 seconds left, drowned in the ocean of punches. The post-fight interview with Michael Bisbing rocketed the baddie's U.S. popularity into orbit. I'm a scouser. We don't get knocked out. Hey, I take that shit all day. Boom, right hand. And again, you ready? You ready? Sleep, kid! <laughs> Put it together for Paddy, the body, Pimblet! Pimblet returned home as a national hero, and come March 2022, the fan support rumbled throughout the O2 London arena. But Paddy wouldn't be the baddie if he hadn't caused a couple heart attacks in the opening seconds. Was that when it comes to oh? Rodrigo Vargas's only mistake was engaging in wrestling. Once the Scouser found his footing, the Mexican's minutes of fame were numbered. His knee. Uh -huh. A gorgeous hip toss was followed by a back take, a noose on the neck, and the inevitable surrender. This could be it. He did it again, in his own unique way. Unwilling to sit on the sidelines, four months later, Pimblet performed at the next London event. His foe, a grappling wizard named Jordan Levitt, was 6-1 with six submission wins. Two years prior, the Monkey King made a splash with a knockout of the year contender. Oh, wow. The crowd greeted Patty as the main star attraction. The Scouser was having fun during the walkout, but in the cage, he meant strictly business. Here inside the Ota Arena. Once in the line of fire, significantly, the American initiated a clinch battle and scored a slam takedown. In turn, Pimblet threatened with a guillotine attempt, then disengaged when an opportunity presented. After a brief exchange, Patty banked the rest of the round on the mat in dominant fashion. And he's got that oh, he's got the neck. Now he's taking the back. Who is it around for Patty? This is a great end to the round. That success accelerated quickly in the second lap. Pimblet landed a couple of strikes in close quarters. And he's trying to get that. Oh, nice oh. knee! Took the Monkey King's back again. There's one hook. And squeezed the neck for a tap. This is it! That's tight! He gets it! He gets the tap! The Paddy Party goes to the next level! The teabag celebration marked the Scouser's third Octagon win and the third performance of the night bonus. Paddy proved he's for real against tough competition. This is how I get down, boy! Post-fight, Pimblet could have leaned into some self-promotion or called out a top 15 opponent. However, after tragically losing a friend a few days prior, he elected to bring up a paramount topic. If you're the man, and you've got weight on your shoulders, and you think the only way you can solve this by killing yourself, please speak to someone. I know I'd rather have me make cry on my shoulder than go to his funeral next week. So please, let's get rid of this stigma, and men start talking. The UFC has found itself in a difficult situation, with their brightest stars from the British Isles leaving the sport. Paddy Pimblett can become a game changer by filling that gap. Following three octagon appearances, the buzz around him is close to the early days of McGregor. The flamboyant blonde from Liverpool pours his heart out, finishes rivals, and is far from shy on the mic. We don't get knocked out. Cashing in on the hype in the sport's most dangerous division won't be easy, but the 27-year-old has plenty of time to do it. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, choke the like button, subscribe to the channel, and vote for sport.